Shalom and welcome to The Bible Comes to Life. Join us as we explore the stories of the Bible and experience them where they actually happen in the land of Israel. I am Omer Eshel, Director of the Israel Government Tourist Office, Midwest Region, and your host. Today, we are going to talk about an epic battle in the history of Israel and of Western civilization, an event that is very close to my heart because it took place right in the area where I grew up. I'm talking about the battle recounted in 1 Samuel chapter 28, the Battle of Gilboa. The chain of mountains of Gilboa are situated in a strategic part of northern Israel, right at the southern tip of the Jezreel Valley, the only place in northern Israel where you can cross from east to west with no physical obstacle. Let us turn to the Bible, 1 Samuel chapter 28. Now it happened in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for war to fight with Israel. The Philistines gathered together and came and encamped at Shunem. So Saul gathered all Israel together and they encamped at Gilboa. As a side note, Shunem is the biblical city which is right next to my home where I grew up and I could see it from my back window. We continue. Then Saul said to his servant, find me a woman who is a medium that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, In fact, there is a woman who is a medium at Endor. Endor is situated right across from the Gilboa Mountains. We can imagine how in the middle of the night, King Saul crosses the valley from his campsite in the Gilboa Mountains underneath the nose of the Philistines to seek the guidance of the witch of Endor. Continuing, so Saul disguised himself and put on other clothes. And he went and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night. We understand here that Saul was so afraid by the sheer size of the Philistine army that he did something unspeakable. He went to visit the witch of Endor, who was practicing the same type of witchcraft that he tried to uproot during his first years as the king of Israel. The reason for his fear was that the prophet Samuel had passed away just a little before this epic battle took place, and Saul lacked the guidance that he needed at this crucial time. Let us see how the battle might have looked. We have two camps situated on the Gilboa Mountains. We have Israel on the west side of the mountain, and we have the Philistines who went across the valley in the middle of the night and up through Bethshean on the east side of the mountain. The battle itself took place around an area known today as Mount Balkan, which is the highest point of the Gilboa mountain and is actually a plateau on the ridge of the mountains. A perfect place for a battle. As it is written in 1 Samuel 31. Now the Philistines fought against Israel. And the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell slain on Mount Gilboa. Then the Philistines followed hard after Saul and his sons. And the Philistines killed Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malkishua, Saul's sons. The battle became fierce against Saul. The archers hit him. He was severely wounded by the archers. Then Saul said to his armor bearer, Draw your sword and thrust me through with it lest these uncircumcised men come and thrust me through and abuse me. But his armor bearer would not, for he was greatly afraid. Therefore Saul took a sword and fell on it. So it happened the next day when the Philistines came to strip the slain that they found Saul and his three sons falling on Mount Gilboa. And they cut off his head and stripped off his armor and sent word throughout the land of the Philistine to proclaim it in the temple of their idols and among the people. Then they put his armor in the temple of the Ashtoreth and they fastened his body to the walls of Beth She'an. Let's consider the viewpoint of Saul. 
He was the first king of Israel. Before, it was just a group of tribes run by local judges. He was the first one to establish a kingdom in the ancient state of Israel. Now, he is seeing his fragile kingdom being destroyed by the Philistines. And we can understand that he would rather commit suicide than let his body be abused by the sworn enemy of Israel at the time, the Philistines. Bet Sha'an today is a national park. It is situated on the east side of Mount Gilboa, exactly as it describes in the Good Book. It is made of two different sections, the Byzantine and Roman city, which is the vast majority of the park, and the biblical site of Bet Sha'an, where you can go up and see the remains of the wall of Bet Sha'an, the same wall where the Philistine put the bodies of Saul and his sons after the great battle of Mount Gilboa. Today, when you visit Bet Sha'an, you can ascend the mount and have a magnificent view of the Byzantine and Roman city. And if you visit at night, you can see a magnificent light and sound show known as Knights of Chan. You imagine yourself as a resident of Yevesh Ad coming in the middle of the night to rescue the bodies of Saul and his sons in order to bury them in a proper manner. By using the Bible as your guide, you can go back in time and be a part of Saul's camp, be a part of David's camp, be a part of the ancient Israelites from the time of the kings and the prophets. Only in Israel will the Bible comes to life. <laughs>